And we're live. Hey, everybody. How are you? It is Wednesday. We've got another great edition of Mom to Mom coming your way. You guys, you are going to love, love, love my guest today, Haley Duff. She kind of needs no introduction, but I'll give her the big introduction in a second. But for those of you who are new to the show, I just want to welcome all of you. And we're going to meet Haley in just a minute. Um, for those of you who have been watching the show, you know that we do this every Wednesday. This is the little show that could. <laughs> I started the show from my attic during this crazy pandemic. Um, and we've just been having fun ever since. Now, a little bit of an update for you. So the mom cave may look a little different because this is actually a replica <laughs> of the usual mom cave that I'm in because my whole family, we've moved out of our house because we are under construction and we are currently living in my in-laws attic again. So I am currently in the bedroom that my husband grew up in. Um, it's a humbling experience in case you're wondering, but it's just sort of consistent with the gong show that is 2020. So we are living up here full house style. And now I'm actually broadcasting a TV show from here as well. Why not? Um, all right, but let's get to it because today we are talking to Haley Duff and you are just going to adore her. So you probably already know her. She's an actress. She's been in countless things, Napoleon Dynamite, Seventh Heaven, Lizzie McGuire. Um, she's a singer as well. She's written a cookbook uh, called The Real Girl's Kitchen. It's actually one of my favorites. It's such a beautiful book. She's also the co-founder of the Little Moon Society, which is a clothing line for kids, but now has expanded to adults clothes too. Look how cute that sweatshirt is. I need that in my life. Um, and don't forget all the Hallmark movies. Oh my gosh, it's my dream to be in a Christmas Hallmark movie. What am I forgetting? She's done it all. I know what I'm forgetting. She's the mom of two beautiful girls. I cannot bury the lead here on Mom to Mom. So let's bring into the mom cave, Haley Duff. Hi. Hi. I wish I was hanging out in your basement, real mom cave. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like, oh, it's like a mom suite because I'm always on the upper yeah. level. Um, I've been thinking of the Jeffersons. I played the Jeffersons theme song yesterday, moving on up. And I'm so right. I'm now calling the top floor girl our deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> Teresa says I like Haley's jeans with holes in them. Hi everyone in the chat. It's good to see Hi. you guys all here. Everyone, meet my friend Haley. Um, Haley, it's been a long time. We met in LA and did a very short Obviously, list. I have a co-host today. Hey! <laughs> Hi. Well, why don't Hello. you introduce us? Tell us about your girl. Do you wanna do you wanna tell everybody what your name is? What's your name? Uh, oh, poop. Well, not today, it's not. This is my littlest one, Lulu. She also has an older sister who's taught her the word poop. Oh. That's fun. That's a big happening in our house right now. I mean, so how, first of all, how is it going for you? So I know that LA sort of um, feels like it's sort of going backwards a bit. So like yeah. set the scene, what's going on out there right now? So um, I really can't tell you much past the bubble that I'm living in currently. Um, but, you know, oh, she's back. And she's back. <laughs> um, we get it. Okay, say hi. Hi. Um, so, you know, this is kind of sums up what my life is like right now. I'm working from home. I'm taking care of two kids. Um, you know, my husband's working from home too. So we're juggling craziness and hello, you're choking me out, girl. <laughs> and um, lucky for me, I have the greatest mother-in-law in the world who's like comes and spends weeks at a time with us. So um, she's been helping me. Come here, you. And is she uh, on the clock right now? Is she, she sleeping is at right the wheel? Right <laughs> She's sleeping like, at the wheel. <laughs> so how are you managing everything? I mean, this kind of sums it up, but you are trying to run a business. On a, on a computer like this most days, or like have my ear pods in as I'm like pushing her up the hill. I do get a lot of work done um, in stroller time. Mm. I can put her in the stroller or put her in. Yeah, you, I'm talking about you. Yeah. Um, if I can put her in like her little uh basket cart thing or the little push car i can put my ear pods in and i can get through like a couple phone calls and things like that but 
Yeah, I mean, this is what it is. <laughs> and I'm at the stage now, and you look great, but I am, I'm done. Like, oh I, I don't think I can do the hair and makeup anymore. I'm, I've been wearing these since Monday. <laughs> it just no, no, honestly, it's gotten really bad. I was actually laughing with a girlfriend of mine because um, I like haven't had a pedicure in months. Like, I've been doing it myself at home. I haven't had a facial. I haven't had like my hair done. It's just. You know, Hi. oh, Hi. My... it's a family affair here today, Maria. We're meeting all the girls. Oh my gosh, they are so so cute. So, this is I... my big one that I told you about that taught her little sister how to say that word. Well, that's what big <laughs> sisters are for, right? <laughs> they are but so yeah, cute. Um, you know, I think honestly, it's uh, it's like this for everybody that's got kids and is working from home, it's like you're just juggling as much as you can and trying to keep everybody safe and exactly um, i have a store in studio city called little moon that um has been really hard to juggle during these times because we can open we have to close we can open we have to close you know you're kind of like watching the news every single day to see um new protocols and you know, what's expected of business owners at this time. So, yeah. And it's so hard for us moms right now because it's truly one day at a time because we don't know what the future holds for fall. And so, so what are you thinking with school and homeschooling? Are you going to have to dive into that? Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I kind of felt like we would touch on this topic because I think it's what every mom is concerned about right now. Um, we are, not going to school. We're starting kindergarten, but yeah. her school. Okay. <laughs> you gotta go girl. Um, her school is not opening. So we have found four other kids that will be going to her school and, um, we're going to do a little pod like learning group. And we found a teacher that will come and do three hours a day with them. And so we're just, we're leaning into like what the new way of doing things is in like the, the best possible way that we feel like we can keep our kids safe, but still give them that experience of socialization and working through conflict and, um, you know, all the things that are so important in that kindergarten year. Yeah. And we're lucky because our kids are younger. So, my littlest oh, one is God. about to turn three, and then my oldest is going into the first grade. So we're kind of on the same page with that. And having missed a couple of months of school was sort of no big deal, I thought. And I was trying to it just was actually manage. kind of nice. Yeah, and I was just trying to manage you working know? from home and keeping everyone safe and scrubbing the groceries and the Amazon packages and being a crazy person. But now to think All day, like, every day. <laughs> yeah. but now to think. Oh my gosh, is she going to miss part of first grade? Now this is getting a little bit more serious. So, um, and I know in LA, the decisions have been made for a lot of you guys. Like a, a lot of the schools aren't opening um, here. We're still in flux. So it's on, it's top of mind for every mom, because how do you move forward with your business or your career? Or even thinking about two weeks from now when we don't know, we right. don't know. I know. I, I said to a girlfriend of mine yesterday, um, you know, I feel really grateful that we've been okay during this time, but even still, I have so much anxiety that I never had before of the unknown. I'm such a planner. I'm such a, you know, organizer of like our time in our life. And so, um, the ability to not be able to do that, I think has been the most stressful for me. Um, but you know, I think about families that have more kids than I do, or, you know, I know a couple of teachers who have children too, and they're like having to try to teach from home and watch their kids. It's like, it's really, it's hard. It's so hard. So where are you with food right now? I know that's where we kind of, yes, that's where we fell in love. We were a part of a very short lived supper club. Yes. Like one time. <laughs> yes. That tends to be how it is, and it makes me so sad. In LA, though, I tr I consider that a true love affair. We met, we said we were going to have dinner, and we yes. did. And so, yeah. in LA terms, that's like pretty great. Um, I actually haven't seen the person that introduced us in way too long, but she's also one of my favorite people to go and have a dinner. Same. Have a meal 
because we all love food so much. Yeah. And when you came out with your cookbook, I was so excited for you. And it was so beautiful. And you still have the blog, right? Real Girls Kitchen. I do. I don't update it as much as I should. I tend to kind of like get lazy and I put most of it on like my Instagram stories or my highlights. Um, but yes, the blog is still up so you can reference recipes. I actually just sent out our um, newsletter today for Little Moon and I included one of my favorite salad recipes in it. So you know, I, I'm still constantly like updating things. They're, they just don't always quite make it onto the blog <laughs> like they should. Well, something has to give. We cannot do it all right now. We cannot yeah. be successful at all the things right now. So yeah. uh, keeping the little ones fed and clean and, you know, um, I want to remind I everyone who has like, really fun with food that um, I haven't talked about yet or anything, but because I just finished um, developing it. But I'm doing um, the wing showdown for off the menu with Uber Eats. And I developed the most incredible wing recipe. I will definitely share it on social media. Um, but it's really cool. You can order the wings through a bunch of different restaurants and Uber Eats. And then the money goes to charity. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's really fun. There's a bunch of different celebrities that have done it. They did a burger one the first time. And now this is their wing one. And being from Texas, I was like, Oh, I got you. Give me, give me the wing. Give me the wing challenge. So when can we see it? I think pretty soon. I don't know the actual date, but I've turned in all my material for it, all the recipes. I recipe tested like five times since a bunch of restaurants were making it. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> I do have, I really have to good, keep it posted. I do have a really good trick for wings that I feel like um, mom's watching. If you're baking chicken wings. Do yours ever not get crispy? Mm, yeah, like kind of like they can get like um, mushy almost. Yeah, you're like, well, this is why I like a deep fried wing is because it's crispy. Where like a baked wing is so much better for you, but it never quite gets crispy. Mm -hmm. So I have a trick. Should I reveal the trick? Yes. Baking powder. I know. What? I know. Why? Baking powder. I did so much research about this, trying to figure out how to make a crispy wing in the oven. And because I felt like my wing recipe should be a semi-healthy recipe when I turned it in. And as I was reading and as I was like recipe testing different ones, you mix baking powder into your dry seasoning. Mm. And it dehydrates the skin. It pulls the moisture out. So when you put it in the oven, it gets crispy. Nice. I was like, <laughs> Mind blown. Yes. So I know you love to cook and, you know, you your, your cookbook was always approachable food, which I liked, but it was still like very tasty and, and innovative. Are you able to cook that stuff for the kids or are you kind of? You know, what's funny is I have been seeing this like big resurgence of the green smoothie. I think uh, Reese Witherspoon posted it recently or something. And it's one of the recipes that's in my book. I've been making it for years i was taught about it from jenna dewan who was taught oh. how to make it from a nutritionist called kimberly snyder i knew you were gonna say that yeah so kimberly has like trickled down through yes so many people i'm trying to get and kimberly on the show she just had a baby so she's on maternity leave but she's um, on my list i have not seen her in years but she is so sweet and lovely and i really credit her to teaching us all the green smoothie yeah, I feel like it was her who taught everyone I know. And um, so that's one of the recipes that I make for Lulu almost every single day. We have a garden out here where I grow like zucchini and okra and um, a bunch of different lettuces and things like that. And um, I go out there in the morning almost every single day with my two-year-old and she picks the lettuce. We wash it. We put it in the Vitamix and she drinks a green smoothie with me almost every day. That's awesome because they get all the yeah. vitamins in. So I know a lot of people, a lot of moms I talk to right now, they're really struggling with trying to make food every single day. And they're saying, I'm just not a good cook. I'm not equipped for this. When did you know that, that you were a good cook? Um, it was a slow burn for me. <laughs> Uh, I actually started my, a lot of people ask me why I started Real Girls Kitchen. And the truth is, is because I didn't know how to cook. And my mom is an amazing cook. My dad's a great cook, both my grandparents. So 
um, I felt like a little ashamed that I didn't carry that on within my family. And um, so I started this blog and I would post things that I tried to make. And most of the time I would post things that I burned or messed up in some way. And um, really it was through that process that I found out that I was a pretty good cook. And there you go. Yeah, so it really actually started as kind of like something to be funny, like look what I did to this I, one recipe that stands out is like a mustard fish and I made it for Christmas Eve one year and I like destroyed it. It was the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. So, you know, I, it was during that process that I was like, oh, wait, I actually really love this. And um, it was just the most incredible creative outlet for me, too. I agree. And I love to cook as well. And people say, how do you how do you know how to do it or whatever? And I said, you're not born with it. You got to practice. Yeah, you got to just just start. I always tell people to start with easy stuff. Because yeah. if you start with easy stuff and you're killing it, then you can work up to the harder stuff. But if you go get like a recipe from whoever, I'm looking at all my cookbooks, I'm like, whoever, um, you know, Chef Ludo's book, you are not going to be successful with that <laughs> recipe. Yeah. You know, so start small, get really confident, and then work up. Totally. All right. I want to get to this question from Colton. Hi, Colton. Um, he says, all right, give me the deets on the Lizzie McGuire reboot. Will she reprise her role as Amy Sanders? I need to know what's happening. Like the oh. air I breathe. Oh, I'm not. No, I am not. And I cannot tell you anything about the Lizzie McGuire movie or reboot. I have no idea anything about it. I know they started and then they stopped. That's all I got for you. I'm not going to be happy with that answer. I'm sorry. I wish I had a better one for you. <laughs> all right. Oh another question from Charlene. She's saying that, um, you know, you've said that everybody judges parents before they have kids. But then after you have kids, it's all out the window. And it's so true. She's feeling that. She says, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I guess. I mean, this is a topic that tends to be front of mind pretty often with so many of my parent friends. Um, and I do have a little bit of a theory about like why we judge other parents the way that we do. And I think it's because I think it comes from a really, um, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I do think it comes from a good place. I really try to see the positive of why people do some of the things they do. And I think that when we are judging how somebody else is doing something or deciding to do it differently than how we would do it. I think as parents, you are always trying to be the best parent that you can. And the parents that really care so much don't like to see people doing things differently than how they do because they feel so con they feel so much conviction in their choices in parenting. Mm. So it really just is like something that maybe is a mirror to what they're doing and maybe they aren't doing it correctly or maybe there's a better way out there and so it, they tend to feel the judgment on themselves therefore judgment on others like projecting yeah like um i don't i mean i don't know a good example but you know we think as parents that our choices are the best choices there are because we're trying the best we can we want to be the best parents we can for our kids and so when people do it differently than us we're like whoa that's not that's not how you're supposed to do that you know, and I think this is going to come into play a lot come fall if decisions need to be made about do you send a child to daycare? Do you send a kid to school? And parents are going to be making these difficult decisions and one size doesn't fit all for every family. I think there's going to be a lot of judgment. <laughs> Listen, I'm guilty of it, too. You know, when I when I look at like parents that have decided to maybe go back to school too soon or have been entertaining people in their house, then, you know, I'm guilty of that as well. I think we all um, have like feelings about how people behave during this time because we're, it's coming from fear, first of all, you know, we're all scared, like something could happen, our family could get sick, you know, things like that. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly am guilty of it on my side, too, where I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know? Yeah, Lisa's saying she totally agrees. When she sees someone doing something different as a parent, it makes us question our own parenting style. So exactly what you were saying. Um, Thank you, Lisa, for understanding how I was trying to word that. I was like, is this coming out right? Or is this yeah. confusing? 
Well, Lisa wrote a book called How to Raise Perfectly Imperfect Kids. So she totally, oh, totally, totally gets it. Yeah, you have to read that. We've, we've had I a chat like this before on the article. show. I read um, an article like right in the beginning of um, quarantine and COVID that was, I want to say the title was like, strive to be a B plus parent instead of an A plus parent during this time and you will find much more happiness. And, you know, that's something I've really tried to think about during this time too, is just being kind to myself as well. Cause like the first few weeks I was like a maniac. I was like trying to keep the house perfectly clean, trying to make like amazing meals for my family to sit down at the table. I was like, we're going to remember this time and I want it to be perfect. I'm like, no, I'm like, watch TV. If you need to put your feet up on the couch, if you need to leave the mess until the morning, like. Everyone's just out here trying to survive this, you know? At the beginning of quarantine, I came out of the gate like Seabiscuit. I yeah. built the classroom for my kids. I was going to be teacher of the year. I was going to- I wish I could walk into meal. my garage. Yes. <laughs> Within two weeks, I look, that, that just made me feel terrible looking at the classroom that wasn't being used. And I was, it was just a reminder of how I was doing everything wrong and had to start over. Um, but Julie's this is asking, good mom, you know, you yeah, it's hard. Um, Julie's asking about family. Um, are you able to see your family during quarantine? She's asking if you've been able to see your sister. Your sister has kids too, right? She does. Yeah. And we live right down the street from each other. Um, we have seen each other a handful of times, but we have not, um, you know, just fully immersed in it because we, about a month ago, um, our nanny came back to work and, um, so we just felt that, and same for her. And so we just felt that it was not so safe for the exposure of, um, each other's people that we were seeing. Yeah. Um, and then we see my mom, but I really try to keep a distance with my mom, which sounds terrible. Um, but we do things like they'll come over and sit like on the back porch or sit by the pool while my kids are in the pool, things like that. Yeah. But it's really not for us. It's more about me wanting to take care of my mom, you know, so. I get that. So what do you think about the future of acting? in this world that we're living in. Luckily, you've got a lot of balls in the air, but where, how? I, you know, I just got asked to go do a Christmas movie and I just am like very torn about it. I would obviously love to go back to work. Um, oh, somebody's dressed up for a Christmas movie here. <laughs> okay, can you go please sit over in the kitchen and wait for me to be finished? Thank you so much. I don't know where she got this fuzzy hat and the scarf, but you look very cute. <laughs> you look like a snow bunny. Um, but I do, I, I go back and forth on, is, is this safe to do this right now? Is this me missing work and missing like getting to go be somebody else? Is it worth the risk of like COVID to my family? I don't know. There's just a lot to... And do they talk about when they put the offer out? Are there precautions in place? I mean, you're in a lot of rom-coms and things like that. How could you ever yeah. be in a love scene? Uh, this one does not have that. So I have I can check one thing off the list. Um, and the Screen Actors Guild regulations are pretty strict. So there are, you essentially get assigned a pod within your production. And then only those people come into contact with each other. The crew is streamlined. It's pretty intense. Wow. All right. I'm getting a lot of comments here about Napoleon Dynamite. And so I don't want to get anyone mad. Okay. In the <laughs> um, but they're saying how much they love Napoleon Dynamite. What about a Napoleon Dynamite 2? What did you think when you first uh, got on that set? Did you know it was going to be the cult classic that it was? You know, uh, it's funny because when we read it and when we all auditioned for it, um, it was a certain type of comedy. So when you read the script, you were like, either thought it was hilarious or you were like, what, what is going on here? Um, and I thought it was amazing. And I, the second that I met Jared Hess, the director, I knew I was like, he's gonna make a really special, really unique movie. And then when we got on set, it just, there was some sort of energy around it that was like, this is really special. 
Um, but in no way did we think it would do what it did. I mean, we were all at the premiere at Sundance and it, it was like you could see the ripple effect of once people started seeing it, it was really special. Um, and then a Napoleon Dynamite 2, we did an animated series of Napoleon Dynamite, but it did not last very long. Um, maybe one season of it or something. And, uh, you know, Napoleon Dynamite 2, I don't know, we're all kind of old. <laughs> we're all like, we're all pretty old now. Um, but, you know, the beautiful part about a movie like that is I, I got to walk away with a lifelong friend in Tina Majorino. And, um, you know, it's something I get to look back on and be really thankful for an experience like that. It's a great one for the archives for all of us. Yeah. Um, we could go on and on forever. I feel like we didn't even scratch the surface, but I want to get to this segment that we call Too Good Not to Share. Okay, um, great. With some things that my mom friends have been sharing this week, um, starting with, we love Christy Teigen here on Mom to Mom. What's not to love? And yes. just a reminder that she's got that teenage boy humor that we all love. She posted this video on Instagram. Take a look. It's like, and then there was all these um, celebrities and other people being like, just move your hand a little, just a little. Yeah, that's so funny. She but really she, puts him through it, huh? She does. <laughs> and she's got her um, new Instagram cravings, which is great for all food lovers. So yeah, I encourage people to check her, that out. Both of her books, I think. Oh yeah, they're so good. Okay, yeah. next up, this is another one that was getting passed around with my mom friends. I cannot wait for you to see this one. It goes on pretty long, so we could only show a little bit. Every right. single thing that this comedian, Laura Cleary, does totally resonates with me right now. Watch this. There's no bullet. You should definitely have six pieces of toast for breakfast. Why would I do that? That's insane. Mm, because your prime is already passed you by and you're basically a clown for a living, so what the hell does it matter anyway? That's a good point. Okay, I have bad news for you. What? I couldn't hear it. Oh no! I was done. Why can't I hear it? So it looked amazing. Let me give but you the cliff notes. <laughs> oh my god, I have to send it to you after. I wanted you to see that so bad. So the cliff notes. I'm sorry. Is oh, she was gonna put makeup on and she was gonna get out of bed and she's gonna do all this stuff and there was a little devil on her shoulder that's like. Why put makeup on? You're past your prime and you're basically a clown for a living. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. I and mean, then, listen, the no makeup of it all has been very real. I quit. I said to Matt the other day, I, was, I had like a full face of makeup on. I had a shoot for something and I was like, hello, aren't you going to tell me how beautiful I look? How great I look? And he was like, I mean, you look great. But he's like, I know all your looks at this point. So I was like, don't I look so different and amazing? And he was like, I mean, I've been with you a long time. I know all your looks. And I thought to myself, oh, no, he knows my COVID look, too. My quarantine vibe is not alive. The quarantine vibe is what it's all about right now. Um, oh, that's a bummer. You couldn't see that. All right, one I more thing. I took all my nail polish off, all my jewelry off, and didn't wear makeup for like two months. I was a real hippie mom. But that's, I mean, it's kind of a nice little reboot, honestly. It was, like, yeah. It, you know, it's nice to be able to do that, to not have to commute, to do, there are some definite silver linings in all this. Um, I wanted to remind everyone too, as part of our Too Good Not to Share, that today is Share the Medical Mic Day as well. So a little while back you saw um, that, you know, white women were sharing the mic with um, the black community and a dynamic and diverse group of people to get other voices out there. And so Dr. Renee Perro and Dr. Lauren Powell started this. And so today only you're going to see the share this medical mic. So you might see that on Instagram. So keep your eyes open for that, um, which I think will be really, really cool. Haley, thank you so Is much. It over? It's been 30 minutes. What? Okay, it's been, that was fast. It's so fast. I feel like we, we barely, barely even scratched the surface. Um, please tell everyone where they can find you. I know you've got 1 million followers on Instagram. So let's get a few more for you today. Tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Haley Duff or at Little Moon Society. Um, my recipes on realgirlskitchen.com. Um, 
what else is that it i think that's it well until we see you in another tv show or movie so you'll have to keep us posted thank you it's so good to see you i wish i'd give you a big hug i know you too all right thanks so much for being Bye, with everybody you. have a good day <laughs> All right, that was Haley Duff. She is so awesome. I told you guys you would love, love, love her. So a little bit of housekeeping to get to. So today we did the show at 2 p.m. So for my regulars here, you know that we're normally Wednesday at 4, but Haley said she had something going on. So we're like, you know what? We'll switch it. We can do that. We are flexible. Um, where is my notes here about what's going on next week? Um, so a reminder to tune in next week. Ah, we've got Erica Spera. She's going to be with us Wednesday at 4 p.m., um, and we're going to be talking about d diving into more about back to school stuff. She's a New England local, so I can't wait to introduce you all to her. And then a reminder, too, that Chef's Pantry on the Hub's Facebook page um, with Anna Rossi is Monday, 4 o'clock. She's been cooking up easy meals. Um, well, not necessarily easy, but really, really good meals that you can make from home. Um, and you can see us on The Hub today, Monday through Friday, and The Hub Today weekend on NECN. We've been working from home to bring you great content. So I'll see you next week on mom to mom Thanks to all of our new followers, and thanks to everyone who's been returning every week. And uh, we'll keep doing this thing. All right, guys. Good to see ya.